think there's two or three things. First of all, situational assessment needs to be distributed. Again, one of the things we outlined in the EU field guide is you need your employees to be a human sensor network that you can deploy in real time. Because you need to assess test situation from a multicultural, multiple experience, multi-cognitive background. And you need to see patterns and outliers in that. You can't afford to spend three months commissioning research because things are changing too quickly. Yeah? The new stuff we're doing on um, structure theory and physics, papers just come out on that, is to say, well, you can, and this is what we're calling the estuarine framework, and the estuary model is a good one. Because in an estuary, things flow both ways, dependent on the tide. And there are sort of granite cliffs, which are stable, and there are sandbanks, which change constantly. And you often have to read clues from the surface level of the water. So I think where strategy is going to go is into that sort of ecological metaphor of what's stable, what isn't stable, how frequently do we need to assess it, where are the outliers? Um, and then, therefore, where do we start to deploy energy? And probably this is one of the most important things that comes out, certainly my approach to complexity. Whatever has the lowest energy gradient will win. Yeah? If you want to put that in moral terms, you know, if, if the cost of, cost of virtue is, less, is more than the cost of sin, people will sin. Right? So in strategy terms, if you want customers to buy your product, the energy cost of buying your product has to be less than the energy cost of buying a competitor's. Mm -hmm. And notice I'm saying energy cost, not necessarily price. And I'll give you an illustration of this. After IBM took us over, which was completely unexpected, I was sent on a mission to explain to IBM salesmen why we always asked them to bid. We were a systems integrator, but we never worked with them. Mm -hmm. yeah? And so... Well, happy to do that. So we went and said, well, we always asked you to bid because you were always the most expensive and you gave us the most material, which we could put into our proposals. But we didn't work with you because you didn't understand what a systems integrator is about. So you tell us your kit was faster. Well, we know so bloody what, right? I mean, we're going to put this together with lots of other kits with lots of software. The differences you're talking about are just disappear in the noise, right? Uh, whereas Sun have said, if we ever need a faster processor because the client does it, they'll just upgrade the processor without an argument. Mm. So they've removed, they've shared our risk. So we're going to go with them, even though the kit isn't as good as yours, but they've taken away our risk. And I said, HP, put three people into our library and help us write bids. So are you surprised? Because our bid costs we need to reduce. Are you surprised that we end up with HP kit on the proposal? because they've reduced our energy cost of bidding. I said, you're not looking at the complete process. You think it's just produced the better mousetrap, and it isn't, mm -hmm. right? It's all the relationships and everything about it. So look at the total energy cost of what you're trying to do and manage that energy. And that's what we're doing with the s mapping is map the energy gradients of the system so you can see what's more likely or less likely. And then that becomes kind of like the new approach to foresight is actually to map the evolutionary potential of the present, not forecast the future. Yeah, Because that way you can see what's likely to change and what isn't likely to change. And it also links in with, sorry, I'm throwing a lot of stuff around, but it's a long day, what we call the frozen two approach to strategy. Right. So this, this will at least will be memorable. Adjacent, is that the one? That's it. So basically, if you haven't watched Frozen 2 now, this is your excuse to go and watch it, even if you haven't got young children or grandchildren. Yeah, Frozen 2 is a great movie. Frozen 1 is just Disney, all right? But it was so successful, they had enough money to do Frozen 2 properly, so they had fun. And there's this wonderful moment in the middle of Frozen 2 where the real heroine of the Frozen series, who's the younger sister without magic, all right? Yeah, left in a position where she thinks her older sister and the snowman have lost, sings, all I can do is do the next right thing. Right? Now, in Stuart Kaufman, that's called the adjacent possible. All you can do in complexity is map where you are and identify which next steps are coherent. And then you move into those next steps and you look again. So strategy becomes much more contingent. Yeah. Now, if you have to invest over a 15-year cycle, you're taking bigger bets. 
right? And that's a whole different process. But for most people, particularly in software development, you're talking about something which is much more dynamic. As stabilities emerge, you stabilize them. Yeah? It's why we're going back to a lot of the old OO stuff, for example, but starting to talk about organizational units as objects as well as software. Mm -hmm. So you define your objects and you define the interactions. So you create stability in those definitions. But then the way that things interact with other things can actually respond very quickly to unexpected circumstances. And that's called getting the granularity right. So you build your organization in smaller units with defined interactions and with fast feedback loops. So effectively, you're managing emergence rather than trying to plan forward. Yeah? 